Hello, Dr. Jeanette Raymond here, psychologist, psychotherapist, and relationship expert, with part 10 of my series on your relationship rules that are usually unconscious, that work against you and mess up your chances of having secure, stable, comforting connections with your loved ones. This rule is about what happens when you have a specific way of receiving love. So someone I worked with some time ago uh, grew up in a family where they didn't talk much about feelings, but they showed their care for one another by feeling sorry for one another, by pitying one another when someone outside the family had upset them, not so much inside the family. So this person grew up believing that being pitied, being feeling sorry for him, and uh, coming to his rescue, taking care of him when he was upset and helpless and so on, that was what he thought love was all about. Well, as you can imagine, during his uh, dating experiences, then he got married, he had friends and uh, colleagues at work. When they tried to show their love and care in different ways, like praising him, telling him he did well, encouraging him when he was having a hard time, he didn't take that in as love. It just sort of hit him and then, you know, kind of washed over him. He recognized it intellectually as something positive, but he didn't actually let it in as love. It didn't feed him and nurture him. It didn't make him feel good. It didn't make him feel valued or wanted or truly cared for. So his wife, friends, colleagues, and everybody else would feel very, you know, dejected because their way of loving him was not being received. And he was complaining about the fact that they didn't care and they didn't love him and they didn't show their concern and love in the way that he wanted. So he got more and more um, separated from them. You know, relationships became more automatic. You know, you do this and I'll do this and we play our roles and so on. And the, the actual love and nurturing and warmth, the glue that holds the connections together became hard and pokey and rocky and, you know, it wasn't malleable. There was no way anything could flow between them. So everything became, you know, alerting on fear. What's he going to do next? How will this be? How will that be? Walking on eggshells. It was awful until the time that he came to work with me and I was able to show him because he did the same thing to me. I was able to show him how every time I smiled or gave him praise or gave him encouragement. And then I asked him a little bit later, five, ten minutes later, well, how do you feel about that? He said, oh, you know, not nothing better, I'm just the same. And I was able to show him that this happened time and time again, that when I gave him the goodies, when I showed my love, when I praised him, when I acknowledged his efforts, when I held his hand through the rough times, he didn't see that as love and it didn't make him feel any better. But if he came in with some sob story and he was in great distress and I expressed empathy or sympathy or pity, then he lapped it all up. He would sit up and his face would light up and he really loved that. And I had to keep pointing that out to him too, the contrast between what he was seeing as love and accepting as love and what he was rejecting as love, which was actually more solid and more uh, real love. So this client worked a long, long time with me on that. And eventually he began to slowly shift and move towards real love instead of love that came through pity and feeling sorry for him. And hopefully you too, by watching this set of 10 videos, can figure out what your own relationship rules are that might be getting in your way or those of your loved ones that put you in a straight jacket and force you to behave in a certain way that also messes up the relationship. So I'd love to hear from you what your experiences are, what you've discovered, any changes you've made, how you've enjoyed the series. I'd be delighted to hear from you and respond to any of your comments.